So welcome back students. So today we are going to start with our concluding module. So the concluding module here is titled as sustainable biorefineries. So in the previous modules we have started with the introduction then we went on to the inorganic chemical industries and we divided them into two parts. We discussed about the base chemicals, the inorganic base chemicals, sulfuric acid, ammonia, phosphoric acid. Then we went on and moved ahead and went to the homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis. So that we have seen it was the bulk of the most of the processes and we have learned a lot of concepts from there. So now moving away from the conventional industries, we move towards the sustainable or we may say the biorefineries. So as you know the biorefineries are the sustainable uh, refineries, they are termed or coined recently, not recently, they may be coined let us say around uh, 10 to 15 years back. So the previous modules were discussing the fossil fuels, the fossil fuels based uh, chemicals or intermediates, but this is exactly the same manner like we discussed even though I have not discussed the oil refinery in this module in this course, but in the oil refinery we use a fossil fuel that is a crude oil to generate chemicals. Here we are using uh, some bio based materials to generate useful products, chemicals and processes. So we start today's lecture with the sustainable biorefinery. So this is very important uh, in the context of today's world because uh, we know that the fossil fuel is getting and getting depleted. So we need to know if there are some alternatives. So the alternatives are what we will discuss and it will be found out in the biorefinery setup. So the lecture is titled as biorefinery products and process design. The process design I may not take up in detail the mathematical part. I will just check out with a block diagram and make you give insight what goes on in a biorefinery and how it is very similar to a oil refinery. So I will introduce to biorefineries initially. Then uh, we will see what is the importance of biorefinery. So the uh, one is to introduce the biorefinery, then we will see what type of products we obtain from a biorefinery and then uh, we will classify the biorefineries. You can see we have classified the biorefineries, why they are important. Then uh, transition to an expanding bioeconomy. So like uh, how can we transition, I mean how can we take this up to the existing setup. So we do not need to make new plants. There we can see there are different types of biorefinery which can use the similar uh, plant which has not been used or it can be set up at a cogeneration facility. So these are the types of biorefineries, it means what are the infrastructure you require that we will discuss briefly. So biorefinery as a strict definition what it says is it is a facility that integrates the biomass conversion processes and equipment to produce fuels materials and chemicals from biomass. Okay. So it means it is a facility which integrate the conversion techniques and equipments. It will integrate both the conversion techniques and equipments to convert them into useful products. What are these useful products? It may be fuel. Let us say when I talk of fuel, uh, you should always consider we should talk of fuel only when it is having a similar calorific value like that of diesel and petrol. So some examples as you are already familiar, ethanol, butanol, these are all you know, these are some which are quite similar in characteristics as compared to fossil fuel. Then the materials we are talking about, materials means uh, what do you want to take out from this? Do you want to convert them right to fuel? If not fuel then what else? So we will see those. If not fuel there are other ways also to convert them. Let us say I want to convert them to bio fertilizer which is a new concept or bio CNG or we can also convert them to liquid carbon dioxide so because liquid carbon dioxide as you know uh, you have been seeing this it can be easily be transported. Uh, so because it will be transported means at a certain temperature and pressure it may exist as a liquid. So that is very important from it and it is a byproduct of this biomass. Then chemicals, chemicals there are a lot of chemicals from biomass, it is similar like refinery. We will get some platform chemicals such as furfural, then glucose, then uh, you have uh, uh, HMF, these are all levulinic acid, these are all different chemicals which are obtained from this because from these chemicals you further go ahead and produce aromatics. So what is a biobased product? The biobased product means it is made from renewable sources. 
here the plant material is the main ingredient and it should be biodegradable. So, any product which actually satisfies all three of these property can be classified as bio based product. So, it means you have the renewable uh, source should be renewable in nature, the plant material. So, when I talk of plant material then immediately I will just recall back the module 1 in the second lecture I discussed the plant material means it will have cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. Okay. So, cellulose is crystalline in nature, hemicellulose is soluble while the lignin is the solid part. So, it means that uh, these plant material are the main ingredient and the process the product should be biodegradable. So, what is biorefining? Overall the biorefining means it is overall if I want to define it, it is a national and local policies promoting biorefinery. So, we not only we just discuss biorefining technically, but it has what are the policies of government or the legislation. So, that the legislation should be in such a manner it could encourage biorefining such as giving tax breaks or you giving some economic zone to set up this uh, facility. Because biorefining as well as oil refining is similar. So, it is not like that you are using any bio product and then generating something which is dangerous to the environment. So, it will also adhere to the same strict environmental regu regulation as we have seen for the fossil fuels. For example, the permissible limit of SOX, NOx in the atmosphere. So, it means that what we have seen that uh, in those industries which you have seen earlier in sulfur or nitrogen, there is an increased cost of products made from fossil fuels. The most of the cost goes into the adhering to the environmental legislation because we have to capture the SOX, NOx through some additional steps which means you require some capital expenditure. So, what are these? Then uh, you have further steps like extraction, processing, disposal, all this increases the running cost. But so biorefining means in the case of biorefining all these operations which just now I said it is of less. It means the number of operations will be less, but then we have to see whether it is sustainable or not. It is not like that uh, we are producing something from bioproduct and in return it again generates carbon. So, we have to see that sustainable part also whether that carbon capture is happening or the carbon is in a carbon cycle. So, there are some advantages. It, it, actually allows rural economic development and because in the rural setup it has lower economic cost and it is also environmentally safe. So, environmentally safe I would not say it is totally to be safe, it I will say that it is to be still be adhered to the amount of the pollutant which may be present in the atmosphere. There are legislations already available. Why are they important? Because we have seen there is a growing demand for energy. If you recall our first lecture, we said that uh, the fossil fuels, carbon to hydrogen ratios, all that we discussed and we say that the energy will not last for another 50 years or so for the coal is the widely available till now, but it will not also last more than 50 years. So, that is why the growing demand for energy, fuel, materials as well as chemicals because specialty chemicals has a huge market and scope. So, these specialty chemicals can we use the raw materials from the bio based products? that is where this biorefining comes into the picture. So, there is just want to repeat there is a finite availability of fossil resources. So, obviously, when uh, now if you see uh, this because of the current economic situation and the present scenario in the world order, the fossil fuel is getting more and more costly. You may be now be aware of the price of the petrol and diesel in the open market or uh, the barrels amount of dollars per barrel it has increased a lot because of the current tension in Europe. So, because of that uh, may be the forest resources may be um, looked upon. So, over dependence of many countries on imported resources. So, now many countries are looking into this by refining why because like for, for example, like fossil fuel what are we doing in India? We are importing more than 80 percent of this crude oil. So, 80 percent means we are paying in this dollars, we are paying in let us say in the foreign currencies primarily dollar. So, it means that some our foreign exchange reserve are also going outside. So, we want to produce something within India itself. So, one way is we do not have crude oil to that extent to satisfy the entire energy demand, but we can always look up into alternative solutions such as this bio products. Bio so, that is what I have written here national security. 
Then there is the reality of climate change and need to reduce greenhouse gases. So that is what I was again repeating in the previous slide. So it should not generate some gas like it should not generate carbon dioxide. Okay. Even if it generates carbon dioxide then uh, it should be used in some other form or it should be converted to some other form. So it means demand for eco production. So it should be competitive with the global economy because if it is not competitive it is very costly the technology is very costly then nobody there will be no taker. Even if you have made a new technology it should be compatible and it should be economically feasible. So that is it helps us the biorefinery setup will help us stimulate growth within the rural economy. Now you see this is the annual surplus biomass residue and ethanol potential. So biomass to fuel I am considering the biomass to fuel means I am primarily focusing on ethanol. So if you see the gasoline consumption in 2016-17 is around 23.77 million tons so that is 32 million kiloliters. So our government has allowed 10 percent blending and the 10 percent blending shall require close to 3.2 billion liters and 20 percent blending which will be shortly be allowed shall be requiring 6.4 billion liters of ethanol. So a need is felt to produce this ethanol from bio based methods. So if I give some numbers 1 ton dried biomass. So I am not telling what type of biomass but for example you consider it to be generic in nature 1 ton dried biomass shall approximately give us 250 liter of cellulosic ethanol. So 1 ton will give 250 liters. So what are the remaining going? Remaining will be going to the lignin and hemicellulose because cellulosic part is easy because you can convert the cellulose through enzymatic process to glucose and from glucose you do a fermentation you get ethanol. So rice straw which is disposed of in various ways such as burning releases greenhouse gases. Now this is particularly important because if you know in the northern India during the months of October, November the farmers usually burn these crops. Now these rice straws or wheat straws when they burn so it is nothing just increasing the greenhouse gases. So can we use this can there be some logistic or supply chain so that we take up this straw rice straw or wheat and leftover and we use them to produce ethanol. So there is a I mean indicated approach is required both from the government and the local agencies to come together and formulate a strategy. Because the point is the rice straw are rich in carbohydrates almost 60 percent fermentable sugars. So it means that if I am taking the carbohydrate as a source of bio product so it will give us close to 60 percent of yield of cellulosic material. 60 percent cellulosic material means we are almost producing half the amount in ethanol. So now I have listed some biomass that is cotton stock, maize cock, mustard stock, rice straw, sugar cane, bagasse, wheat straw. So if I add them together which are given in million metric tons per year this is the annual availability. So I add up almost 382.7 million metric tons per year. So what is the theoretical potential production of ethanol? It is 13.2 billion. If I, so it is like if you take the percentage you can get to know so which is the most. So rice straw if you see almost it is close to 35 percent. Sugar cane almost 3 out of 12, 28 out of 112. So these are pretty high numbers both for wheat straw and rice straw. That is why we should as focus on these two forest material not forest material I would say it is the agricultural residue material. Now in 2018 uh, the government of India has released the national policy of India on biofuel. So what is this policy talks about? You should know this policy why because it categorizes biofuels as a basic biofuels. So it will categorize into three different zones. Basic biofuels is first G first generation fuels, cereals and sugarcane. Then advanced biofuels which are called second generation or 2G ethanol. This 2G ethanol source may be from non edible plant, agricultural and municipal waste and finally the third generation biofuel which may come from microalgae microbes to enable extension of appropriate financial and fiscal incentives under each category. The Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Yojana to provide viability gap funding VGF we call this. What is this viability gap funding? It means that you may have some technology, it may not be viable 
and it, that technology requires some capital asset. So, our government of India will give us or help us financially to try out that technology, even it is not viable or uh, you know the pro pro project report has been prepared in such a manner it is not viable, so they will try to fund that particular project. So, this particular Yojana will help us give viability gap funding to 2G bioethanol manufacturing project so as to increase availability of ethanol for ethanol blended petrol. So, 10 percent ethanol blended petrol that is why government is giving a lot of push. So, it expands the policy says it expands the scope of raw materials for ethanol production. How? It allows the use of sugar cane juice, sugar containing materials such as sugar beet, sweet sorghum, starch containing materials such as corn, cassava, damaged food grains like wheat, broken rice, rotten potatoes which are unfit for human consumption. So, what you do not do not throw it away what they are saying in the policy is do not throw it away this can be a source of biomass that is what the policy outlines. So, another important guideline is there is no separate environmental clearance to produce 2G ethanol ok. So, these are the four different uh, outcomes of the policies. So, what are the incentives? So, if the policy is made naturally there should be some incentive. So, what are the incentives if I want to say club it in three different parts in the first part is the cleaner environment. So, 1 crore liter of E10, E10 means 10 percent of ethanol is blended with the petrol. So, it means it saves around 20,000 ton of CO2 emission. Okay. So, 10 percent close to 20,000 ton of CO2 emission from India alone lesser emissions of carbon dioxide to the tune of 30 lakh tons. Okay. It reduces the crop burning and conversion of agriculture residues and wastes to biofuel. So, these are the three different advantages. Okay. Then the municipal solid waste management. Now, you see in most of the cities urban areas we generate a lot of waste the municipal waste. So, that is why you, you must have seen in your local uh, environment or local neighborhood they are always they will be advising you to segregate the waste ok. Segregate the means with organic matter, inorganic matter or some which are metal based you all to segregate out that is why they are doing it, why they are advising it to so make it easier. I mean you know it is easier to convert. So, those which are organic matter they can be easily taken up to a bio based refinery that is what the municipal waste management. So, if you see around 62 million metric tons of municipal solid waste is generated in India, one ton of such waste has the potential to provide around 20 percent drop in fuel. So, the waste itself will be able to absorb some of the price of the fuel. So, there is a 20 percent drop in the fuel, a price means requirement of less fuel. The infrastructure investment in rural areas if I want to say 100 there is a third advantage 100 kiloliters per day of biorefinery. Now, if you see 100 kiloliters per day producing ethanol biorefinery will require around 800 crore capital investment. So, currently India is setting up due to this advantage is setting up 12 2G biorefineries with an investment of around 10,000 crores. So, what are where are these 12 biorefineries located? Some are already one or two are already underway and some are provide they will be commissioned maybe what I have read is about 2023 early 2023 most of them will be in ready operational. So, let us see where they are located. So, now if I look at the serial number 1, 2, 3 it means the companies I am differentiated through company. So, now this if you see this is uh, the some of the refining capacity. So, now Indian Oil Corporation has total of 9 refineries. Now, out of these 9 refineries there are 3 refineries where they have taken up this 2G fuel production that is ethanol. That is the 3 IOCL refinery are Panipat, Gorakhpur and Dahej in Gujarat. HPCL likewise has 2 refineries oil refineries and uh, it has adopted or it has proposed to start up this four different biorefineries one in Bhatinda, Badaun, then Saharsa and West Godavari. And then Bharat PPCL, Bharat Petro Petroleum has two refineries and it is now setting up three bio based refinery in Borgar, in Bina and Bhandara. Okay. This Chennai is yet to start then in Numaligar in Assam which is the Numaligar refinery they are also starting up with a 2G plant. 
and um, MRPL has also started one of the plant of Devangere that is in Karnataka. So, these are the different uh, companies and other companies which have yet to start or they will be in the process of starting these if you see these are in the pipeline they have not yet started these are the roughly the total production capacity of the oil. So, Bharatoman refinery, HPCL, Mittal Energy, Reliance and then SR oil. So, if you see most of the PSUs have started uh, in, in moving in this direction the bio based refinery and there are 12 of them have been started I mean they are not started they will be starting up early next year. So, what are the overall we saw is there are three different categories of fuels 1G fuel, 2G fuel, 3G fuel. So, 1G I can talk about the start sugar because so if I want to classify 1G and 2G it means they are basically edible and non-edible sources. So, edible sources are start sugar and non-edible sources are corn, sugar cane residues, rice, wheat straw or other lignocellic biomass or municipal solid waste. The 3G ones are the algae. Now, the first 1G and 2G if you see they will require land to grow or to get the final product. Okay, so, you will get the actual land, the arable land. From the arable land, you get this bio based product. But in the case of algae, which is a 3G fuel, algae does not require land. It can grow on water. So, pond, it, the pond may be uh, like artificially made or it may be naturally made. So, what you do is you grow up this algae. So, this algae will be rich in the source of uh, carbon and hydrogen. Then you do a similar method, you put it in a biorefinery as of source biomass source and you convert them. So, these are the different biomass con processing technologies. So, if you want to go and look up these different sources, I will advise you to please go to the NPTEL course on the biomass conversion energy and biorefinery. The course is already online where the details of the processing techniques and technology is discussed. But so, I am just giving an overall overview because this biorefinery and bio this is not into a regular chemical process technology this course. So, basically it is integrated nowadays in the syllabus. So, what they produce all these are the ones which we have already seen in the previous modules. We have seen ethanol production, now it is bioethanol. Then we have produced biochemicals such as HMF is one of the chemical, then furfural these are the important chemicals which are produced. Okay. Then HMF, furfural, all these are very important biochemicals. Then bio CNG. Now, this is very important. The bio CNG is something like bio based compressed natural gas. Now, if you see the agriculture residue, so if you burn them, you get biogas. Now, this biogas primarily is in natural gas, it is like natural gas, but it has to be separated. The natural gas, primarily methane, has to be separated. Now, those there are some techniques for the separation. Obviously, these are already uh, laid down the techniques. So, if you want to separate that natural gas directly, it will work like a normal compressed natural gas. The compressed natural gas, from where do we get? We get it from the natural gas itself, the source, and it is primarily methane. Same thing we are getting from agricultural residue. Now, if you see, there is this Govardhan project which has been recently been launched just three months back means in February 2022 by our honorable prime minister what what it does is in Indore it will produce 17,000 tons of biogas per day from 550 tons of organic household. So, you know, now you see the stoichiometry. So, this is already this plant has been started. So, this is the name of the, the particular plant is the Govardhan plant in Indore. Likewise, the liquid CO2 as I told you, the liquid CO2 is very useful because you know this liquid CO2 is now used as a preservative. It is also used in fire extinguishers that is also a source of compound. So, if you are getting some carbon dioxide as a byproduct, well, we will always advise to try some technology so that you can store this carbon dioxide in a liquid form. So, in the liquid form means you have to store at a very low temperature and at a high pressure. Then power is also one of the outcome. And then biofertilizers. What are the biofertilizer means? When you do some technology, you apply some technology on these sources, you get the biofertilizer means you have some living organism into that man fertilizer. So, this living ribosium is one of the living organism which is used as a biofertilizer. Okay. So, these are also another uses. So, these are the different uses. Now, sometimes again I am putting, now they have now come up with a 4G biorefinery because this 1G, this 2G 
and 3G I have already discussed. Now sometimes now the vegetable oil which is a byproduct and there are some genetically modified microorganisms together, they can be a source of 4G biorefinery. So this is called the fourth generation biorefinery. So 3G is we have already discussed this 3G is mainly the uh, if I want to talk it mainly of the algae or microalgae. This the agro waste, so this if I want to recollect again non-edible, this is the non-edible source while this is the edible source. So if you see uh, we have non-edible, non-edible algae, microalgae source or this vegetable oil with genetically modified microorganism. So all this again gives the same thing what we said is for biomaterials, feed, then the biochemicals, biofuels, power, similar. So some in some nowadays uh, this classification are done additional that is 4G fuel. So this 4G fuel uh, we will not discuss much detail but we will take up this 1G, 2G and 3G concepts and what are these biorefineries in the next few slides. So first generation biorefineries, what are the different sources? So the target production of a single product stream from the bio. So now our main 1G biorefinery is to produce single product from the biomass feedstock. So number of already they are existing first generation biorefineries, this is rapeseed oil. For example, the rapeseed oil is the source, biodiesel is the product. Then sugarcane to bioethanol, cornstarch to PLA or gasification of biomass to syngas. So syngas you know it is a mixture of CO and H2. So biomass is a source converted to CO and H2 followed by chemo and biotransformation to biomethanol. Okay. For chemical or bio transformation to bioethanol. So if you have a uh, syngas, so I mean this is this is connected here. So you convert it the gasification of the biomass to syngas and from syngas you know you can easily convert to ethanol, so bioethanol. So what are the pros? The pros is up to 60 percent reduction of the greenhouse gases emission compared to the fossil fuels. They are easily hydrolyzable biomasses, but easily hydrolyzable when I say it means it has more of cellulosic content, so less of lignin content. So they are easily hydrolyzable, so sim com simple sugars are more. But the problem is they will take up a arable land and they will compete with our food because we are growing this on our, uh, these are the part of our agriculture. We cannot take the agricultural source, the food which we eat, we cannot, it will compete, the fuel will compete with our arable land. So that is one of the great disadvantages. So this has most of been, have been discontinued because as you see the advantages of 2G, 3G and 4G biorefinery. The second generation biorefineries, if I want to discuss, it is forest biorefinery. So mostly the products from the forest. So multiple product streams. Now here you don't have single product stream. You have multiple product stream. For example, if you have lignocellulose based biorefinery, you can have cellulose as one of the product, hemicellulose as the other product, then lignin, and direct extractable. Because each of these products can be further be converted in useful chemicals. Okay, that's what you will get number of products. So it means what other is the forest biomass is easily available. They are widespread and economical because there may be several places where you do not have arable land, this is non arable in nature. So that place can be used for growing these type of crops, non edible seeds or forest biorefineries for fire, forest biorefineries, then you can convert them easily. But the problem is uh, when you do that uh, during the pre-treatment, if there are some inhibitors, they will not reduce or separate out the cellulosic matter because it will try to degrade the cellulose. So that is one problematic in the pretreatment process. And they are also recalcitrant to hydrolysis. The hydrolysis part means where you convert them, solubilize, I will say solubilize the hemicellulose part is a tricky part in this because you need to control the feed and the different enzymes to do this, whether you do acid treatment, whether you do alkali treatment, lot of steps are involved. Now third generation biorefineries are also refined, referred to as advanced biorefineries. They are having sustainable circular bioeconomy. So now there are two types of uh, sustainable biorefinery source. That is as I told you this 3G biorefineries are mainly available in water. I have classified them into two parts, the macro and microalgae. 
So, what is macro, what is micro? Macro means you are getting most of the uh, source, uh, no, in a big source, uh, open source. Uh, so, suppose there is a source of water, you, you grow the algae, that is called uh, overall algae. But if you, I have written here mic micro algae and an example is like phytoplankton. Suppose phytoplankton, this is micro algae which is not seen by naked eye that type of product also you can grow. So, both of them will club together. So, what are the different algae in that manner? So, suppose you want to generate cellulose, you can have red, green or brown algae. So, what does red, green, brown algae means? So, red uh, algae means primarily it is coming from freshwater lake, brown algae means mainly from seaweeds while, okay, seaweeds while green algae means the one which is coming from macro part, the macro means lakes, ponds like that. The red and green coming from the ponds, the brown ones coming from the seaweeds. So, if I say what are the products, cellulose is another product, starch is the other product, you know starch is a polysaccharide. Then alginate, these are the, some uh, precursors for alginic acid, these are very useful, alginic acid. coming from brown algae, then agar again is a polysaccharide, then mannitol, mannitol if you know it is a medicinal value, it is a use of the diuretic. So, these are different compounds which can be formed from the different algae whether it is red, green or brown algae. So, only thing is there is pros, what are the pros? There is no competition for arable land, it is cost effective and environment sustainable, it provides appreciable valuable compound. Now, higher greenhouse gas emission, but the only issue is because it will plants, it is a plant, this is microalgae, because you are growing it specifically for some purpose, so it means it is again giving out a greenhouse. So, I will tell you one thing, this even though it is cons, means it is either this advantage, the scientists have come out a solution to solve this, that is if you put it in a special environment, okay, if you artificially grow it such that you control the temperature and humidity, so you may reduce the greenhouse emission. So, it is also for use feasible for large scale feasibility. Now, only issue is greenhouse gas emission because if you grow this macro algae, what happens is it is taking up nitrogen and phosphorus also. It will require fertilizer, okay, nitrogen and phosphorus. So, it means now you want to grow something for a biomass and you are consuming nitrogen and phosphorus. It means then you have to produce fertilizer. The, the production of fertilizer itself again you are releasing greenhouse gases. So, that is what I mean you are increasing the greenhouse gases. Now, the issue is if by some manner the carbon dioxide itself which are coming from any industry is put into this production for this microalgae or macroalgae, then it will be a useful part. It means it is doing the negative, it is reducing the carbon footprints, okay. You understand? It means it is taking up the carbon dioxide as the feed, okay. The plants that is the microalgae is taking up carbon dioxide which is generated, okay, which is generated from the industries. So, if you club them together, then it will be useful and then the disadvantages basically goes or the greenhouses gases emission becomes lower. The fourth generation biorefineries, these are based on raw materials that are inexhaustible, cheap and widely available. The widely used feedstock is biomass from the municipal vegetable oil waste, okay. There are some lot of waste if you notice in municipal, this is the vegetable oil waste. This reduces the recurring issue of treatment and management of this waste. The processes are mostly thermochemical and most of them are used on an industrial scale. So, it will improve the photosynthetic efficiency and the biomass accumulation by the advantage, disadvantages, early stage of development it is yet to be put in place. The only issue is with such type of 4G because these vegetable oil, the MSW, if you want to, uh, you know, you want to do some process which is thermochemical, which means the temperature is pretty high. If it is having some incomplete combustion,
if it have some incomplete combustion, then you can generate other products also and this other products they may also you know like an incineration process, you may generate some toxic compounds also which has not been studied that is why it is called early stage of development. It means you can also generate uh, like toxic products let us dioxins or furans. And these are very toxic, it means even in parts per parts per billion, you will see this is many half life of these compounds are around 7 to 8 years in a human body it will and it is carcinogenic in nature. So, if that is why you see in many places in India and they catch fire the municipal waste and catch fire because there is a lot of reason maybe due to the heat. So, that time even if these compounds, these compounds are generated, dioxins and furans, they are generated. So, if they are generated if it is, even though it is in PPB amount still it is very detrimental to human health. So, we should take uh, care of these points before we go for the, any biorefinery setup. So, overall what have we seen in a biorefinery? So, we have overall the processes are all defined in this NPTEL course, but still I want to recollect. One is the thermochemical conversion, the biological conversion, chemical conversion and the mechanical conversion. Thermochemical conversions involve gasification, pyrolysis, combustion to produce pyrolytic oil, product gas and steam. This pyrolytic oil again you apply some process produce biofuel, syngas, olefins, electricity. Okay. Then uh, biorefinery can also use mechanical conversion, what you do is that you dry it, you extract the part and separate it, then produce lignin, vegetable oil or biofuels, biofuels like ethanol and with that you can also go ahead and produce biomaterials, biochemicals and electricity. Chemical conversion as I told you it is like acid hydrolysis, you put the biomass in an acid, you generate the different components. It can be supercritical conversion, it can be solvent extraction, you can produce cellulose, hemicellulose, lignin. Together we can again convert them and produce biofuel, bioethanol and fermentable sugar. The biological conversion methods can be in anaerobic digestion means in the absence of oxygen. It can be either enzymatic hydrolysis, so you have microorganism which will break down and convert them into sugars, then fermentation convert these sugars into ethanol. So, it can also produce sugars, ethanol and from this you can process for methane, ethanol and methanol production is well known. So, now types of biorefinery infrastructure are actually should you should notice they are actually divided into three types the brownfield biorefinery, greenfield biorefinery and retrofit biorefinery. So, brownfield biorefinery means is space occupied from previous user. So, obviously it will be limited space difficulty in future development, but they are used because you are already have a industry nobody is using it you take that land. So, it is easy accommodation for crew members, easy access to local suppliers because the plant is already there in the part which is well connected or networked. But the only issue is disadvantages you have to demolish the existing plant which can increase the project cost, there is no governmental restriction, this is one advantage. Then there will be local interfering which can delay the projects. The brownfield development localizes the community, this is another advantage localizes the community in a limited congested region. So, brownfield means something which is already available, you are setting the plant on that, so you do not need land. Greenfield means you start from scratch, so scratch means you purchase land, so future expansion is possible, so accommodation is required, then there is limited local supplier in underdeveloped locations, this is completely new, so there is no demolition. There could be governmental restriction if deforestation occurs, okay. If you want to do the deforestation, there may be government restriction, no chances of local interference and it will also reduce the traffic and congestion because you are making this refinery in a new place. Then the third one is the retrofit biorefinery. This is the integration of new technology within existing structure. It can improve the energy efficiency. It is helpful in diversifying the product portfolio and also helpful in reducing the emissions. So, it advantages in usage of existing supply chain reduction and capital cost. Now, if you see most of the some may be already there some industry and you just set up in together you add up another biorefinery together with the existing refinery. So, that is called retrofit. So, integration of new technology within the existing structure. So, biorefinery basically are of these three types. 
So only issue is the transition to an expanding biogreen. What are the crucial cons concerns? How to sustainably refine the renewable biomass resources using diverse biorefinery alternatives and leveraging host mill established efficient biomass supply chain. So the biomass supply chain means the logistics part we have to look up. The sustainability of innovative biorefinery pathways depends on the ability to tolerate unknown future conditions. So you should have able to tolerate these properties, access to feedstock cost, then performance characteristic of novel processes, the energy prices, the bioproduct pricing, the market volatility according to the plant's lifespan and a new policy initiative. So you should also be able to consider these three points. So you should be able to know what the biomass is, what is the property of the biomass, what process am I going to use. If that process I am going to use, will I get the maximum output? All this needs to be studied before you expand it in a bioeconomy. So this is a process flow sheet for uh, I would say both mechanical and chemical conversion. This is the material handle. Initially, you start with a material handling. So, you have the biomass, you do a screening and squeezing to increase the solid content, the pretreatment process. That is what the pretreatment. The pretreatment is means this is all well, this is no chemical is involved here. So, it is only grinding. Then you go to the pretreatment. Pretreatment means you are reducing the crystallinity of cellulose. So, it means mainly you do C5 type of. Uh, compounds, you convert them into C5 compounds, C5 sugars. The combination of pretreatment and hydrolysis will convert these glycosidic links, if you see these are the glycosidic links, to C5 sugars. So, you, a combination of pretreatment and hydrolysis will be making it C5 sugars. Then you add enzymes, you do co-fermentation. So, it means you are generating carbon dioxide and ethanol water. Okay, these are the products. So, carbon dioxide you can trap it or you can store it as a liquid carbon dioxide as I told you this is one of the product of the biorefinery. Then you do distillation and dehydration together because you need to distill the ethanol and water part and the, you have a solid material also coming. So, you need to first remove the condensable gas. So, you require a dehydration and then a distillation is to separate the ethanol and water. So, whatever ethanol comes, it is directly used as a fuel and the remaining part, the solid and liquid material. So, when you, the product coming here consists both of solid and liquid. The solid liquid material goes here and comes solid materials where the solid material is primarily lignin. Lignin will be a solid material, right? It won't be dissolved or neither it will be hydrolyzed. So, lignin will be then be used it will separate these two. So, solid stream used as a feed to boiler. So, it means you have the liquid part coming here and the solid part as a cake, sorry, this is liquid. This is the liquid part coming here and this is the solid part coming out here. The solid part and liquid part further it is evaporated and you get a concentrated syrup this syrup is gone to the process boiler where it may be used to produce low pressure steam. So, then the solid cake again is burnt. So, this cake is again burnt with the fuel. Here you have the cake, it is burnt with a supplementary fuel. to get low pressure steam. So, this is what a uh, typical process scheme for the production of product chemicals or products. So, what are the products here? Steam is one of the product, fuel is another product, CO2 is another product. So, you have three products, okay? Steam, fuel, so power, chemical, the power, fuel and chemical, chemical is CO2, okay? So, this is actually one of the 2G ethanol plant of the Praj industries. So, I told you IOCL Panipat has already started. This is a 2G ethanol plant of Praj industries in collaboration with IOCL. So, if you see this is the entire plant. So, the entire plant setup and this is the material handling. If you see this is the, the biomass which is coming. It has already grinded the material handling system. It has been grinded and sent by conveyor belts. Then this is the pretreatment unit and the solid liquid separation together. Okay, the pretreatment means, as I told you, pretreatment come the hydrolyze, hydrolysis part. So pretreatment here is pretreatment, solid liquid separation. Here the hydrolysis and the fermentation. Then you have the distillation setup, separate ethanol and water, and finally you have the waste treatment. So waste means the cake. You have the cake. You put it here, the cake, and then you burn it with the supplementary fuel. 
to get the different uh, steam out of it, low pressure steam. Okay, so these are the various parts which is IOCL Panipat is generating. So, what are the byproducts formed from this? The byproduct is the cake, the lignin rich cake. This is separated from the solid liquid separation and is used as a boiler fuel along with supplementary fuel. So, it means it is sent in a boiler, the last step as I told from the previous slide. Then the raw CO2 gas, the raw CO2 gas comes from the uh, previous, uh, I mean after the hydrolysis the fermentation unit. It is generated during fermentation, it is vented off to the atmosphere after scrubbing with water. You can either vent it or you can, so I am not talking about this particular uh, plant, you can also store this CO2. This is one thing also in terms of liquid CO2 and send it or transport it. So they can also scrub it with water. Then you are also getting technical alcohol, this is the impure spirit because the solid liquid part which you are separating out, it may be a technical alcohol also, it may be sold in the market for production of chemicals or can be blended with fuel ethanol. Then you get fused, fused oils, it should, be fused, it should be fused oil, mixture of higher alcohols removed from the system. This fused oil also is a part of the cake and is burnt in a boiler to produce steam. The sludge. Finally, the sludge from the process condensate treatment, it may be used as a manure for agricultural field. And then the ash in the last step that is in the boiler may be sold to the bricks and the cement industry. Now look, all the products, lignin rich cake, CO2, technical alcohol, fused oil, sludge, ash, they can be easily be used in various processes. So overall, the capacity of this is 1 million liter per annum for 2G fuel capacity to produce multiple feedstock, it, the amount of feed it takes is the corn cobs, dover rice and wheat straw, cane trash, cane biogas, cotton stock, complete end to end offering from feedstock processing till end product and wastewater treatment, process integration, so there is a process integration applicable because it is not, uh, it is, I mean it is under copyright activities, so you have a process integration for the optimization of energy and water consumption. Then the wastewater management to meet the zero process liquid discharge. So whatever you are generating within the plant, there should be no discharge outside in the environment. So it has this particular attribute. Then there is multiple product you can obtain bioethanol, you can biogas, and there is also a procedure for bio CNG unit. Another important uh, fuel I have till now discussed is bioethanol. This can biobutanol. So, biobutanol is an alternative energy source due to the properties, it has higher calorific value than ethanol, it is easily mixed with gasoline in any proportion and it is lower flammable and hydrophilic. Okay, so that is why the process um, where it is formed is called the acetone butanol ethanol fermentation. This particular bacteria is used and a ratio of acetone butanol to ethanol is produced in which is in the form 3 is to 6 is to 1. So, maximum concentration of butanol is 10 grams per liter. So, issue is how to separate this butanol from this product. So, acetone you can easily boil off, but to separate this butanol, you need to enhance the butanol concentration. So, this separation of butanol, there are many processes which are used in industries. There are this, so I have plotted here the y axis, which is the energy requirement in kilocalorie per kg of butanol produced, and these are different separation techniques. So, if you see distillation is the most, requires the most amount of energy or the highest cost, there is gas stripping, adsorption, the extraction and pervaporation. So, extraction if you see, it is almost comparable to adsorption that then they may be used to absorb the butanol. So, this is why butanol lies, uh, biobutanol I would say. So, lower al chain alcohols we will say because ethanol, butanol are all lower chain alcohols. So, this is petrol, combustion energy of 32 megajoules per decimeter cube, butanol, ethanol and methanol. So, if you see butanol and ethanol, butanol is having a higher combustion energy as compared to ethanol or methanol. It has more calorific value, melting point at minus 89.5, boiling point 117, flush point 86 and self ignition of 42 Celsius. It is more hydrophobic, lesser flammable, lower vapor pressure, higher flash point and less corrosive. So it is biobutanol has shown promise, promising properties like gasoline. The lower alcohol thus can be used as a fuel with little or no modification to the engine. So if you see GS Caltex here is building a biobutanol plant in the first half. 
So it is in South Korea, second largest refiner. It will start the construction of the bibutanol plant. So if you see that is what they are doing. So bibutanol is an alternative fuel produced from biomass such as sugar, starch, straw and wood. So it can be used as a transportation fuel in fuel with additional modification. Bioethanol is widely used. Now I have been talking about bioethanol even though it is used worldwide. But it easily absorbs moisture which can lead to the collision of metal parts. So ethanol is good but bioethanol is good but because of these reasons now biobetanol is coming up into the picture. So uh, the biobetanol issue is low insolubility in water and it is and low corrosive nature as compared to ethanol. So we have already seen the transition to an expanding bioeconomy and how to make it more sustainable. I have discussed this earlier. So ultimately you have to have an access to the feedstock cost, the performance characteristics of the novel process, whether you want to go with thermochemical, biological or physical that you have to take a call based on the biomass you are, it is available. Then the prices of the biomass is important which that will decide the market volatility and then also you have to depend on new policy and legislation and you have to adhere to those policies. So all these three points will be used to expand this bio economy which are the crucial concerns. So as most biorefiners will be integrated into existing facilities, there will be additional questions. So what are the advantages of incorporating biorefinery technology into an existing mill and what are the potential direct technical impacts? So this is an open question, so I leave it to you. So you think of what are the advantage, what could be the advantage of using biorefinery technology into an existing setup or a mill and what are the potential direct technical impacts? What conditions render the biorefinery project economically and environmentally viable? Due to the foregoing complexity of product, so to answer these two questions, your product and this is product and design systems needs to be adopted and it should be driven by a methodical and a multidimensional approach okay so more uh, work needs to be done so that we use to make it economically and environmentally viable so i'll stop here so these are the reference you should follow the nptl course which i have already listed and this particular article talks about the different product design, the process, the technical decisions, how to take and uh, finally you go through these other two references which will give more ideas on the integrated biorefineries. This is one book which I have followed in most of the part, you should follow this book. Thank you.